In this video, we're going to set up the countdown for the next free decision. So the way the app is going to work is a user will have a set of decisions when they start. And once they use all of those decisions by asking questions to the app, they're going to end up with no more decisions. And at that point, we're going to count down from any, any amount of time. We're going to use three hours, but in testing, we'll use a shorter amount of time and we'll count down until they get a new free decision. So after that time has elapsed, they'll get a new free decision in their account. So this way, the free account, they can continue to use the app without having to pay for an in-app purchase. It'll just be a more delayed, less good user experience. So let's get started. So when our user has no decisions left, we are setting when they should get their next free question, but we aren't actually showing them any sort of countdown or actually even giving them the next free question. So that's what we're going to do right now. The first thing we're going to do is create a new widget here. And we're going to call this the next free countdown. And this will return a column. And first we'll have a text area. And this is just going to say, you will get your next free decision in. And then below that, we're going to actually have a countdown of the time. So first let's add this into our build widget. So we want this right below the decisions left. So if we go up here, we can find where decisions left are and then add this in. So that looks good there. Before we even show anything here, we wanna make sure we're only showing this when the user is in this state. So we can check to see the status of our app, which is app status. And we can see if that is equal to app status of waiting. And if it is, then we are going to return this countdown here. Uh, if it's not, we can just return an empty container. So to get this actual countdown showing, we're going to use this package called timer countdown. And what this is going to allow us to do is pass in a, a large number and then it will just count down from that number. So there's a bit of an example here, but let's just go ahead and install it. So we want the version 2.2.0. And if we open up our pubspec.yaml, we can add that in and then save and run pub get. Now that we have that package, we can actually use it with the countdown widget now. And this is going to take a few elements here. So firstly, it's going to ask for the number of seconds to count down from, and then it's going to take a build. So the number of seconds here, we can set this first, and we're going to create a new variable, and we'll call this the time till next free. We can't pass directly the widget account time till next free because that is formatted as a date time. So we actually need to format this into seconds and we can do that on the page load here. So firstly, let's create a new int here and it will be that time till next free variable and we'll default that to zero. Then we're going to create an init state here and within this, we're going to actually set this time till next free and we're going to set it equal to the widget account and then get that next free question timestamp, which this is a date time right now. And if that exists, then we're going to get the difference between that and the current time. And then that difference we will convert to seconds. And if this doesn't, if this doesn't return anything, then we are going to just return zero. And we don't actually need this question mark here. So now we have this time till next free. That should be set properly now. The next thing is this build here, and this is going to take a context as well as a time. The time will be a double, and the context will be a build context. And this time as a double, we can just return that and we will format that in a bit because it isn't gonna be looking exactly how we want it to. Uh, the next parameter here is the interval, which we can set, and this takes a duration. So we can give it a duration of 
hours, minutes, seconds, but we're going to set the duration to one second. So it will count down one second at a time. This here actually needs to be a widget. So we're going to wrap this in text and then we will give the time. So that should work. The last thing we can do here is set the on finished. So this is going to be called once the timer has gone down to zero. And in this case, we're going to just call a set state for now. And we're going to zero out that we're going to zero out that time till next free, because even though the timer will be counting down, it's not actually going to set the state of that to anything un unless we reinitialize the app. And then lastly, we are going to set that app state and we're going to set it equal to ready. So you can see up here it was waiting, but now we will be in a ready state. So if you rerun this, you'll see we actually have a negative value here. And the reason for that is our time till next free decision has already passed. So let me update that to a time in the future. So I just updated that to a time a few minutes from now, and you can see the timer is now counting down. There are a few things that we do want to be aware of. The countdown isn't always by default started, so we do want to make sure it is going to start by default. And we can do that with a controller. So we're going to create a countdown controller. You might not be thinking this is necessary because it is counting down right here in the simulator, but I found that on the actual devices, it doesn't count down immediately, but then sometimes it was. So it seemed, I don't know, it seemed a bit inconsistent with this package, but I found this way to always get the countdown to start. So we need to define this controller up above and this will just be a countdown controller so now that that's defined like that, once we get into this function that we're creating, the next free countdown, we can set the controller to start. And that I found solves this problem. You can use this countdown in multiple different ways and have buttons that stop it, pause it, and do things like that, which if you do use that, then that's where the controller is actually gonna be super useful. But for here, this is all we need it for. The next thing you'll notice is the way that this is formatted. It's just seconds, but we really want to format this in a, a readable timestamp and then count down through that. With To actually get our numbers formatted, we want it to be two digits for the hour and then two digits for the minute and two digits for the second. We can use a formatter, which we can define right here, and we're just going to define that as F for formatter. And this will just be a number format and we can set it to the two zeros because that is what we want. We want two decimal places for each. And then we're just going to, this is just going to be in English for the US. And that second parameter is just telling us what this number formats language is. And we will have to import the INTL package to be able to use this number format. But now that we have that format set up, we can now take this value here and split it into its three components, hour, minute, seconds. And so I increased it, so now we'll have some hours, minutes, and seconds. The text here where we have the time, let me actually just copy over this new formatted one and I'll explain it because it is just a little confusing. So that is updated and this looks good, but let me run through this real quick for you. So you can see it's three different columns here, or you can see it's three different elements of time here. And we're doing that with just these three elements within this string. So it's three different variables that we're setting each with a colon in between. So we're really taking this time element here and we're manipulating it three different times. The first time we're dividing it by 3600, which is going to get us the hours. And using the division like this, it's going to only get us the solid hours. So if it was like 4.2 hours, this is just going to return four. And then since we're using the format here, the F dot format here, it is applying this double digit format to it. So that's why you see zero four here. And then as you go down, it is a little bit different, but the similar concept this time we're going to take the time and mod it by 3600. So this 
this right here is going to actually kind of give us the leftover piece, whereas this was going to take, in the example, if it was like 4.2, this one is only going to take the 4, this one is only going to take the 0.2, and then we're going to take that 0.2, and again, this is going to be in just seconds, though. So that amount of seconds that would be left, then we're going to divide it by 60, which this this part here is like what we did over there, where we'll just get those amounts of minutes. And lastly, this one here, when we mod it by 60, it's going to remove everything except those final seconds between 0 and 60. So that formatter looks good, and this countdown looks good. So the only thing we need to do now is see if it actually works. So let me set this timer to be much closer in time. All right, so we now have about 10 seconds left, and once this countdown ends, we're going to expect this on finish to get hit, and then update the app status to that ready status, which then should show us the ability to ask a new question. However, because we did not also increase the decisions left, the app status is going to then immediately get set back to zero because we have no decisions. So to fix this, we just need to increase the decisions now by one. So we're going to create a function that is going to increase the decision by one as long as this next free time is zero and the bank is zero as well. So we're going to want to call that here on the on finished, but we're also going to call it when we initialize the app because if you can imagine someone sees three hours left and they leave the app, when they come back to the app, we want to first check if they should get a free decision because the countdown is up. And if that's the case, we'll just give them the free decision immediately. So keeping that in mind, we're going to create this function to work for both ways. And to do that, which we're going to call get free decision. To do that, we're going to take in the current balance, so the current bank. And then we're also going to take in the time until next free. And with this now, we can do a check. So we want to basically, when we call this, we still want to check if we should give the free decision. And the conditions when we would give this is if the current bank is less than or equal to zero, typically it would never be less than, but if it is, we would give a free decision. And we want to see if this time next free value, which will be in the format of seconds, is also less than or equal to zero, which means it's time for them to get a free decision. And if that's the case, we're going to make a call to Firebase so we need a Firebase instance here, and then we're gonna call the collection of our users, and then we're gonna get the document. And now we need the user's ID, which is accessible through the account, or you could go through provider. And then finally, we're going to update the bank here. And since we know that the user's current bank is zero, we're just gonna update this to a one we're not going to increase it by one, we're just going to update the bank to one. So we'll set that bank value and we'll set it equal to one. And that is it for that. Now we need to call this get free decision when the on finished is done. So we'll call get free decision. The current bank is going to be the widget here of the account dot bank and the time till next free. In this case, it's going to be zero. You wanna be sure not to actually use this variable at this point because we didn't zero it out yet. So at this point, if you passed in this variable up here, it would still be whatever it was up here and it would not actually give them the free decision. But let's take this as well and go up to our initializer and also call it from there. So if we paste that in, we are going to need to modify the zero here now and actually use that time till next free. So if we save this and rerun the app so that this initializer gets hit, it's actually going to give us that free decision because we're making the call right here. And then since we have this set to a five second timeout, if we try this one more time and hit ask, you should see a five second timeout and then it comes back although that did not look correct with what we had on our timer there. So let's go ahead and set this to a minute. All right, so I updated this to be actually a 20 second duration. So let's go ahead and try this and ask a question. 
and you can see it's actually not quite displaying this timeout. If you refresh it though, it does it does then load it in, but, but there's an issue with this timeout being set correctly, and that issue is that we set the time till next free. We define that up in this initializer here, and it's going to be the value from Firestore, but this isn't going to get updated. So we need to, so we can easily manually update this when we're saving our data to Firestore. So you can see right here, we're setting our next free question. And we can also set the state here of our time till next free. And we can set that equal to this, this updated variable here of the widget account next free. And you wanna make sure to call this after you have this line set. Uh, but we do need to remember that this needs to be converted to the difference between the current time and this time. So if we go back up to the top, you can see where we were doing that, where we called the difference and then convert it to seconds. So let's go ahead and actually do the same thing down here. So now we'll have that time till next free set. Another thing we can set here is actually that app status. So we can check if the widgets account bank is zero. And then we can go ahead and set that app status to equal the waiting status. Now, you might be wondering why we're even doing this because it already was working. When the, when the account went to zero, it was already setting the status to waiting. This is going to just speed that up. So you might have noticed there was a little delay, but now it will be, let me comment this out and you can see the delay. So right now the timer should be working. So if we ask any question and hit ask, you can see we now get that 20 second countdown, but you might've noticed it was a little bit of that delay. And if we uncomment this out here, that delay should be gone away because now we're gonna be using the state of app status. So it will be instant. What we were doing before was having to listen to the update from Firebase and all of that reading and writing does take a little bit of time. So if you try it now and hit ask, you'll see it was immediate and this all was just immediate. So that is gonna be it for this video. And at this point, the app is now in a state where the base features are all set up and the next thing we're going to be doing is actually setting up all these monetization features. So we're going to add the ability when a question is asked like this and someone is waiting, we're gonna add the ability for them to watch a video and get two free questions. They also have the ability to purchase new decisions and they can also purchase a subscription to be on premium and have unlimited decisions. If you're interested in that, you can head on over to onemanstartup.com slash monetize and it will be a 15% discount. You just use the code YouTube subscriber when you are checking out. All that will be linked down below. Ciao for now.